So now let's talk about our second market structure, monopoly. So here's one way to think about it. If perfect competition is extremely on one end of the spectrum, where the sellers have like no power at all, monopoly is at the all the way at the other end of the spectrum where monopoly has all of the power, for the most part, all of the power. Um, so uh, the other two structures that we're going to investigate next, they sort of fall in the middle, uh, but you can see qualities of perfect competition in some of them and qualities of monopoly in some of them. So uh, as we're about to talk about monopoly, let's review the, uh, the dimensions of market structure in monopoly. Number of buyers and sellers. Monopolies have many buyers, but they have one seller. And when I say one, I mean the only one. One company is selling that thing that they're selling, okay? And because they're the only seller, their market power is they are price setters. They have all of the power to set the price for the product they're selling. And because of that, they have a downward sloping demand curve. Remember, in, in perfect competition, because they had no power at all, they were price takers. They had a horizontal demand curve. But price setters, remember, have a downward sloping demand curve. And so we're going to see that here with Monopoly. Barriers to entry and exit are extremely high. Not only is it difficult for any other company to get into the industry, it is virtually impossible for this one seller to get out of the industry. They are the only ones selling, and they are in. Product differentiation. Previously, I said that it was irrelevant because it's the only product in the entire industry. But what I decided to do is we're going to go ahead and call it unique. This is a product that is so unique, even though it may have some substitutes, like relative substitutes, it doesn't have any close substitutes, okay? So there, that's why there are no competitors, is because the product that's being sold is so heterogeneous that it is unique. And then lastly, information symmetry. Now, this, the information symmetry in a monopoly, it varies. Generally speaking, it's irrelevant because they're, they're the only sellers. So it doesn't matter if anybody knows all their information. However, they, they oftentimes do tend to be secretive. One of the reasons that monopolies want to be secretive is because they want to hide their, the fact that their barriers to entry and the uniqueness of their product uh, from uh, the governments, because if governments find out that there could be competition, then they will, Im they will allow there to be competition. Uh, so oftentimes, monopolies will, will uh, keep secret many of the qualities of their industry so that nobody finds out if there could be another competitor. Okay, So these are the uh, dimensions of market structure for a monopoly. All right, so here we are with the monopoly market structure graph. Now this is what I originally showed you uh, when we first learned about these different curves. We got the downward sloping demand curve, the downward sloping marginal revenue curve that's separate from the demand curve. We've got our marginal cost curve, average total and average variable cost. First thing you need to understand is that this isn't just the market structure for monopoly, this is also the firm structure for, for monopoly. They are exactly the same graph. There is no difference between the firm and the market because the firm is the market in Monopoly. That's because they are the only seller. And therefore, this set of graphs is not just for the entire industry, it's also for the individual firm. The firm structure and the market structure are one and the same. Now what you understand, what I have taught you before, is the way that a monopoly is going to do business given their market structure or their firm structure is they are going to decide on how much to produce based on where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So wherever marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, that is how they are going to decide their profit maximizing quantity. That profit maximizing quantity will then determine their price, the price that they charge. It will also determine their average total cost, and it will determine their average variable cost. And you've already done this before, so you understand. And you can see that the total revenue for the monopoly will be this large rectangle here between price, the height of price and the width of quantity. The total cost will be average total cost times quantity. 
the average vari or the vari the overall variable cost will be average variable cost times quantity. And then this rectangle in here will represent the fixed costs of the uh, company, of the monopoly. Okay? And so uh, everything that you already understand that you have done previously in terms of calculating uh, total revenue, profit, and uh, total cost and variable cost and everything is exactly the same for the monopoly. But the important thing that you need to understand is that when we do it for a monopoly, we are doing it uh, for the entire market as well as doing it for the individual firm. All right, the next thing you need to understand about monopolies is that they are economically inefficient. We said that perfect competition is the most efficient of all the market structures because the price is the equilibrium price. Now, in order for you to understand what I'm about to tell you, one of the things that you need to understand is that the marginal cost curve for a business is the supply curve for the business. So got to understand that. So we're still going to keep writing marginal cost, but you need to understand that the marginal cost curve is the supply curve for the business. All right. And so if the marginal cost curve is the supply curve for the firm and in monopoly, the firm is the market, then that also makes the marginal cost curve the market supply curve for monopoly. And therefore, what you're looking at here is if you ignore this marginal revenue curve, you are looking at a supply curve and a demand curve for the entire market of the unique product that is being sold by this monopoly. And therefore, you would think, hey, if this is a supply curve and this is a demand curve, then shouldn't the price be the equilibrium price right here? And the answer to that question is would be yes, if the market is going to be efficient. But remember, this is a monopoly. It is one business making a decision and they are price setters. Therefore, if they set the price at equilibrium price, it will be efficient. Look here, we would have consumer surplus and we would have producer surplus and we'd have an efficient market. But then the price would be, or the quantity, the equilibrium quantity here, look at this, would be higher than the profit maximizing quantity. Remember, the, the, if they, if a business can decide what their price and what their quantity is going to be, they are going to choose a quantity and a price at the profit maximizing quantity, which is where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, which is right here. And so the monopoly would rather choose that quantity because, whoops, I put an E, it's supposed to be a PM, because that is the profit maximizing quantity which is smaller than the equilibrium quantity. If they produce at the equilibrium quantity, this triangle right here will represent loss for them. They will not be maximizing their profit. They will be losing money. This would be a loss for the monopoly. And therefore, uh, they're not going to choose that because they have the choice of how much they're going to produce. They would rather produce at the profit maximizing quantity, which would then give a price up here that would be the profit maximizing price, price PM, okay, which is higher than the equilibrium price. So the, the monopoly is going to say, no, we don't want to charge the equilibrium price. We're not going to earn as much profit if we do that. We want to charge a higher price than the equilibrium price, which will still give us a sufficient quantity that we earn a higher profit. Okay, and so monopolies are economically inefficient because they want to produce the profit maximizing quantity and charge the price that is the profit maximizing price. They want the profit maximizing price and the profit maximizing quantity, okay? Now, here's what happens. When they do that, here's what I wanna show you. Note, supply curve, demand curve, 
price, quantity. Now, do you see this triangle in here? Do you remember what we call that triangle right in there? That is our dead weight loss. And so now we have a dead weight loss in the monopoly market because they're, they're producing at less uh, than the um, equilibrium quantity. So now there is a dead weight loss, which means that there is an economic inefficiency in the, in the monopoly market. And look what they have. They have a much larger producer surplus and they have minimized consumer surplus to this little triangle right here. And so monopolies are motivated because they can set their price, because they can set their quantity of production, they would prefer to choose the quantity and the price that maximizes their profit and not the quantity and price that creates economic efficiency in the market. So there's this belief I say it exists. It's usually among people who aren't familiar with, uh, with market structure, with cost structure and revenue structure. There's this idea that monopolies can just charge the highest price that they want to charge. They can charge anything they want. Why don't they just keep jacking up the price higher and higher and higher and make the most profit? Well, Remember that there is a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. And therefore, if a monopoly just jacks up the price as high as they want to go, I mean, if they want to charge people $5,000 a month for, uh, for example, um, oftentimes electricity is, uh, as a utility, is a monopoly of sorts. And if the electric company decides, well, we're just going to charge everybody $5,000 a month, and then all the electricity companies will be billionaires or multi-billionaires. Uh, well, here's the problem with that, is that people can't afford to pay $5,000 a month for electricity. If electricity is too expensive, then they'll just do without electricity and they'll buy, they'll, they'll get lighting and cooking from other sources like we used to with firewood and, and candles and that sort of thing. Okay, so monopolies do understand that they are limited by how much they can charge for whatever it is that they're selling. I want to remind you that monopolies are not, they're not setting out to charge the highest possible price. They are setting out to set the profit maximizing price. And I know I just said that like three minutes ago, but I'm emphasizing it so that you can understand that monopolies are not in business to take advantage of people in evil and abusive ways. They're just trying to make a lot of profit. Sometimes making a lot of profit means charging a lower price than you would think, okay? Let me remind you that they are not going to charge a price that's way up here. So why don't they just charge a really super, super duper high price? Well, if they charge a super duper high price, then they're gonna produce a very small quantity. And look here. The marginal revenue is a lot higher than the marginal cost. This triangle right here represents money to be made or lost, sorry, a uh, potential profit that they're not getting. Okay, potential profit, okay? They could be earning more profit. Therefore, they should increase the quantity over to where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. That would be our profit maximizing quantity, which would, which would suggest a lower price, okay? This is the profit maximizing price, which happens to be lower than a high price with no restriction. Even though that profit maximizing price is higher than what we would call the efficient price or the equilibrium price, okay? So we know, well, not always, but well, yeah, pretty much. We do know that the profit maximizing price will be higher than the equilibrium price uh, for the market. Again, showing that we will always have in monopolies, there will always be an inefficiency, there will always be a deadweight loss. All right, the last thing I want to say about monopoly in this particular segment is that, do you see this deadweight loss that exists? We know that the deadweight loss is going to be there because monopolies are inefficient, they're economically inefficient because they are trying to earn the most profit that they can, okay? And the question is, 
are uh, are monopolies motivated to get rid of that deadweight loss? And the answer to that is no. Monopolies are not motivated to eliminate the deadweight loss. Monopolies are not motivated to eliminate dead weight loss. They are not motivated to get rid of economic inefficiencies in the market for their product. Monopolies are motivated by profit. And getting rid, getting rid of the dead weight loss would require lowering the price and producing a higher quantity that is not the profit maximizing quantity. And therefore, this deadweight loss, this is the belief of the monopolies, is that deadweight loss is society's problem. Society is just going to have to deal with that deadweight loss because monopolies are motivated by profit. Now, one of the ways that, that society deals with that, if, if monopoly is going to say, well, hey, that deadweight loss, that's your problem. We know how to make a profit. That's what we do. Okay, You're going to have to figure out how to deal with your inefficiency. So, so monopoly, in many ways, they'll say, this is not our inefficiency. This is your inefficiency. And therefore, it's yours to deal with. And oftentimes, what that leads to is because Monopoly will throw this deadweight loss onto society. Society, which is led by, you know, government leaders, government, the government, society will then intervene and government may impose a price ceiling. What will happen is the government will get involved in the monopoly they won't, they won't own the monopoly. They won't operate the monopoly. What they'll do is they'll go to the monopoly and they'll say, look, um, we understand that you want to make a lot of profit and that's fine. People want what you're selling and we want them to have it. We want to have it too and we want you to sell it. The problem is, is that you, by your profit maximizing behavior, you are introducing an inefficiency. We know that there could be a higher quantity to what you're producing and we know that, our, that the consumers in our society could be getting more consumer surplus. Our citizens could be experiencing more utility. And therefore, we are going to tell you, you can't charge a higher price than this. And what they'll do is they will impose a maximum price and here's their goal. Ideally, their goal, the government's goal, is to impose a price ceiling close to the equilibrium price for the market. Close to the equilibrium price for the market. If they can, let's say it's not perfect, but let's say that they get the price down to here, okay? What that will do is, even though there will still be a little bit of a deadweight loss right in here. It'll be a smaller inefficiency. There will be more consumer surplus and there will be a higher quantity. I'm going to put PL here for, excuse me, PC here for price ceiling. Um, there will be a higher quantity for, uh, for the citizens of this society. Okay. And so because monopolies are motivated by profit and not motivated by efficiency, oftentimes the government gets involved to impose economic efficiency on the monopoly.